One place to start would be October 14, 2020, the 47th birthday of George Floyd. In three years, George would have been 50, October 14, 2023. It will indeed have become the George Floyd Jubilee. I'd like to say happy birthday, George. I know where you are and the world knows who you are because you signaled to your mother in your dying moment that you wanted to be where she is. And so you're there now. You're there with Martin Luther King. You're there with your own mother. You're there with George Wallace. You're there with John Lewis. It's, it's amazing that if we can just understand this as a nation, that there is a role for all of us to play, but particularly the big issue in America is black and white, black African slaves, white slave owners. And all white people were not slave owners. It was the super rich white men who was the owners. We've all got to find a way right now while we're in this pandemic to recraft the way education happens in America. And when we do that, we'll understand why George Floyd's story is so important. Think about it as knees on necks. If the, if the knee is black and the neck is black, let's talk about it. If the knee is white and the neck is black, let's talk about it. If the knee is white and the neck is white, let's talk about it. Let's talk about people in West Virginia, for example, who, who have no clean drinking water. They may as well be in, in, in the deep woods of Africa where people suffer. So if you are suffering somebody's knee on your neck, it doesn't matter what color the knee is, it doesn't matter what color the neck is, it's still a knee on a neck. George, we thank you for that. You've helped us to understand now. So here's what we must do, George. I'm part of a clergy group and a wide group of people. We're all colors, all kinds of professions, all levels of society. We call ourselves the Jubilee National Collaborator. Dr. Owen Codwell was a, was a protege and a student of mine. He was 14 and I was 30. Now he's my colleague and in many cases, my teacher. Then there's Dr. Bishop James Dixon of Houston. Who, who carries the Martin Luther King mantle in this city, the three of us are co-founders of the Jubilee National Collaborative. And right now we are building on something that I was able to uh, do with my dear friend, Dr. Ralph Hall, who is hosting this session. We call it the Beloved Community Ancestors Hall of Fame. And you'll get to know how black and white people whose stories are not well known uh, found out what a beloved community is. Here's what we want to pledge to you, George. When we get to your 50th birthday, I want to call it the George Floyd Jubilee Legacy. George, when you were at every stage, sabbatical stage of your life, you were on the right track, trying to make all the right steps, but you were fighting against a, a huge, I call it prison, jail, uh, suction machine. Just sucking the life out of your community, sucking sucking the life out of you, George. We gotta fix that, and we gotta fix it, George. And I promise you, the people who care about our children—I don't care what color they are—super rich, super poor, black, white, red, yellow, brown, whatever they are, George. We pledge to you for your George Floyd Jubilee 50th year that we will have done everything that we need to do so that your, your, your own children, as well as, uh, as their generations, will not have happened to them what happened to you. And the knee on your neck was both black and white, and it started in Houston. That's why you, had, you were chased out of Houston, George, but George, you were trying hard, man. You were mentoring those young boys, trying to help them. George, you did a great job. In my estimation, you rank with King, and King will tell you why. Go talk with Martin. You're up there with him. Go talk with Martin's daddy. You're up with him. Go talk with George Wall. Go talk with your mother. All of our ancestors. 
they are black and white, George. I have one other story I want to tell you, George, in light of Black Lives Matter. Uh, I know about Black Lives Matter because Black lives have always mattered. And, and I think the younger people act like it's, a, it's a, a, some kind of discovery. It's a discussion that need, no, no, no. Discussion, is, it does not need to be held on whether black lives matter. We have made our lives matter, whether anybody else thought about it. Uh, the great James Brown said uh, to, to white people, anybody else, as far as black folks are concerned, just get out of our way. We'll get what we need ourselves. We can do it. We can do it. We must do it. And we've been doing it. 1865, black folks were set from slavery with nothing but the rags on their back, barefooted, nothing except what was in their soul, what was in their head, and they were also the best trained workforce in the whole world. So when they shifted from 1865 to 1915, they were working for themselves. And what did they do? They did the work of love. The beloved community came first. They built over a hundred black colleges and universities, and we had help. We had colleagues, black and white, built those black colleges and universities, and black and white still support them. 1915 to 1965, those institutions developed the leadership that changed America. By that time, we had a recognizable economy that the corporate Americans, oh, we didn't know y'all had all of this. We called it at that time in 19, mid 60s, we were talking about a $37 billion economy. Nobody knew black folks had all that money. That's when the corporate world got interested in us. From 1965 to 2015, we've been trying to work out what does black power mean? If you know that you are the people who have an opportunity to lift the burden of guilt and shame from your oppressors, then we'll all make America just. America is, uh, is good, but it's not great. It's good for some people, but if it were great, it would be great for everybody. So we have to be able now to say, all lives matter, black lives matter, white lives matter, red lives matter, brown lives matter, yellow lives matter, every one of them, if there's any other color, my dear brothers and sisters, your life matters, your country matters. And the one that I want to challenge right now, I want to challenge America that gets itself healed. And let me stop this by telling you King's dream, that he never got to it. His dream was that we would build a cathedral where neither charity nor welfare are necessary. He said it would be a workable society where neither capitalism nor socialism would predominate. You would you take the best of capitalism, how we make bread, and the best of socialism, how we break bread. You ain't gonna break no bread if you don't make no bread. And you're not gonna continue to making bread if you don't break it. America is already good in so many ways, but she will only become great when she's good for all her people, when all lives really do matter. Black lives, white lives, red lives, brown lives, yellow lives, all lives. May they matter to all of us together. If we matter to all, we will all 